What? Listen to this podcast right now! Hey. Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey Into Comics Network, oh. and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's your yes. choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. Mmm. This is a tasty burger. You ever tried shawarma? Huh? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. Do you want some uh, coffee, Mr. Tully? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. Is butter a carb? Will you stop eating? We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Good afternoon, world. My name is Lauren. I'm going to be your host this afternoon for this episode of foodies watching movies here are my good friends and co-hosts nate phillips how are you doing today nate i'm doing awesome ap how are you doing i'm doing great i'm happy to be here ronica how about you oh i'm doing good i'm drinking some coffee and we just had this amazing lunch and uh i'm ready to talk about it yeah how are you doing lauren I'm very hungover. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you had a potty last night. Oh, spoiler alert. So now that makes the meal that we had even more interesting. Was it successful hangover food? Yes, it really was. Yes! I got up very early this morning, even though I only got maybe, as of 6 a.m. this morning, I had been awake for 23 hours. Damn. And then I fell asleep around 6.30. I slept until like 9.30 then i got up did some laundry and then i went out to the grocery store got the chicken and the rice and then i came over here (laughs) can i just say i read one of your tweets or your facebook posts aloud i want to call them tweets because you facebook post like you tweet if that makes (laughs) sense and i love it but you said your quote me if i'm wrong it said something like it's tw- it was like twelve fifty six, and you had a hot dog. Yeah, twelve fifty six a.m. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> I can't. I I wish I fucking had it in right in front of me because I feel like it said like, it's it's twelve fifty six a.m. and I'm eating a hot dog. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I was just like, who's not? I was. I, I, I'm pretty sure my exact words were, "Lauren is living the good life." <laughs> what? Lauren's Facebook posts always crack me up, and um. That was one of the reasons we became friends on Facebook and I kept seeing her Facebook post and I was like, man, I need to be friends with this girl. She's hilarious. <laughs> so I invited you to breakfast and then we became friends. Yep. Can we talk about the raw story? I love the raw story. What's up? The raw story. Oh yeah. That's actually a great thing. Cause you're a foodie. You're watching a movie called raw. You were telling us. Yes. Um, not where my mind went at all. I'm scrolling <laughs> Facebook. You and Keith Evans are both are, we're both in the same boat. <laughs> I like. Well, did you think she was watching wrestling? Fuck yes, I did, and I panicked. <laughs> Dork. I panicked. I was like, oh my god, Lauren could be on Journey into Wrestling with us. <laughs> Shit, I have to make that happen. And I went to comment like, girl, you got to get in on some wrestling. And I saw that Keith Evans had been like, wait, you watch wrestling? And then her comment was like, no, it's it's a movie. And I was like, crushed. Oh, damn it. I was so certain. I was so certain we were going to I saw out. that post and I was like, ooh, I bet Nate's going to think she's watching wrestling. I did too. I was so excited. Also, like, Taco Bell posts yeah. are life. I love your Taco <laughs> Bell posts because I'm a huge – I have my Taco Bell a very, very specific way. What's your order? Oh, we're fast foodie in it. Okay, so if I'm going to Taco Bell right now, I'm actually – I would probably get um, whatever their $5 box is at the time. Right now it's like a chicken quesadilla with, like, a spicy jalapeno sauce. 
Mm, uh, I but don't it's like the spicy so. So stuff. your order with Taco Bell varies based on what's in their five dollar box. Sometimes, but sometimes I just like keep it basic. But there's some things that I always do. So like the five dollar box typically comes with like two kinds of taco. It's like a soft shell taco and a burrito, or it's a soft shell taco and a hard shell taco, or it's a Doritos Los Tacos and a hard shell taco, or whatever. Whatever the combo is, I always get it beans instead of beef. I always get it no lettuce. Everything else, however they make it, I typically like it supreme with tomatoes and the sour cream. But the new wrap they have, the or it's a quesadilla, has crispy chicken mm. in the quesadilla. It's fucking unreal. That sounds delicious. It is delicious. What would you order from Taco Bell right now? I actually, I don't go to Taco Bell all that often. It's been like a couple years since I've been to Taco Bell. Wow. Oh my god. And, but although, my... although I was in the same boat as you probably up until like two or three months ago. That's when we got the first Taco Bell in Winfield, down where I work. <laughs> so... Down there. Way I down hadn't, there. I hadn't eaten Taco Bell probably in like the past like four or five years. Yeah. I, I, feel, I, I just don't know where the one is, but even when there was one nearby, I didn't go there all that often. But usually when I'd go, I'd get like three or four soft shell tacos uh, just with meat, cheese, and tomatoes. And then I'd put some mild sauce on it. Oh, delicious. That was always good. Nice quick on the go meal. Mm. I always get a nacho bel grande. Damn. That's right. I love <laughs> the nacho bell grande. There's a fist bump right there. Add avocado. Oh. Or, <laughs> you speak or add guacamole. Language. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was like, I'm just straight avocado. I think Taco Bell doesn't have straight avocado. No, no. they're not hipster enough add for guac. that. They're not like Chipotle. And guac. Chipotle. Add guac. Yes. Add Chipotle. Chipotle. What about you? V, um, what are you ordering from the Taco Bell drive-thru right now that we're in imaginarily? <laughs> Probably regrets. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm being honest. <laughs> Fuck, I wasn't expecting that. that was great. Um, there was another fist bump. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably get one of those caramel apple empanadas because they're uh, oh. delicious. And oh. I would get some cheese roll-ups with mild sauce because... That's your jam. That's my jam. That's yeah. a nice, so easy Nate... thing. Oh, sorry. Won't make you sick or anything. <laughs> what are you going to wash that down with? Oh. Ooh. They had a, a Starburst drink at one point, like a, a it was like a slushy drink. Really? Yeah, the pink Starburst one, and that was really tasty. But otherwise, I'm just getting a Pepsi or a Coke, whatever. Sounds like sugar, about. just like straight. Oh, it was legit, straight up pure sugar. I'm not gonna delicious. lie, man. Train of our existence. What's up? And they're definitely gonna hear that. All the mics are live, picking that up. But uh, honestly, I am a root beer fiend. Love root beer. I don't I don't like that it doesn't have any sugar in it or it doesn't have any caffeine in it. Ah. Yeah, I don't like root beer at all. Really? I don't I don't jam I just on feel the like sarsaparilla. If I'm drinking pop, I might as well be getting caffeine from it. So uh, yeah. Right. I guess that's a fair point, but I just love the taste. Well, I could also say that that's a similar thing with ginger ale, but I love drinking ginger ale even though it's caffeine free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? I I so there are, there are root own. beer people and there are ginger ale people. And I am a root beer person. What are you, AP? These two are ginger ale people. I'm a root like. beer person. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Another fist bump. I have wow. officially fist bumped the entire uh, group of foodies today. Just a fan <laughs> of In the first today. seven minutes. Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> did you just say I'm a fan of fisting? I said Nate's a fan of fisting today. <laughs> Dick move. Not cool. Uh, so let's... Well, while it's hot, we should probably get into the food of yeah. the day. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are foodies watching movies. We like to do different food things. I decided to just get really stupid, and I challenged the three of you to bring me a chopped mystery box challenge. I will say, spoiler alert, I knew a couple of the items, like, I, and I kind of had an idea of, I really didn't have any clue what was coming. But when I opened it, it was like there were eggs, and it was a pomegranate and uh, peanut butter, extra crunchy. Like I mean, it had literal peanuts in it. Uh, it had um, these shrimps and some delicious looking chicken. Let me just tell you. Oh, that chicken was beautiful. Uh, Sarah was gushing about the chicken. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing wine. Oh, the wine was the, oh, the, yeah. the ingredient. Pinot the Noir. Pinot Noir. <laughs> That made me want to watch uh, Kimmy Schmidt. 
So I looked at this box. Oh, rice. Very important. Oh, that yeah, the jasmine important, rice. The jasmine rice, brown jasmine rice. Oh, my rice. God, that rice was so good. Hold on, we're getting there. We're okay, getting there. So, Go ahead. so real quick, I'll kind of detail to you guys that uh, I opened the box, and I was just like, at first I kind of thought, fuck, what did you do? <laughs> like, you idiot. Why did you tell these people you could do anything with random ingredients? This is going to end terribly. And I, like, settled into it, and I was like, just look at the fucking ingredients and put it together. And I was like, ah. I want to do a play on some like pad thai. The peanut butter and the chicken is really what got my wheels turning. And I knew that I could do something nice with the rice and complement all that. Uh, the eggs, obviously, in pad thai, typically there are some eggs. I scrambled them this time, which isn't really how they're typically prepared. I'm not actually sure how they prepare uh, Asian uh, egg. Like a fried rice, maybe? It, it might be. It's, maybe. They scramble it and put it in, in rice. You can also fry it and then chop uh, it up. They fry it and chop it up. That's what they do for mm -hmm. the pad thai. At least, well, they used to do it exotic thai, which they closed. Oh, everybody closed was so disappointed when that place restaurant. closed recently. Exotic thai. That was pretty good. So, Where was it? On 45th in um, Indianapolis and Highland. Highland. Oh, they closed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was... Five Star Thai in Maryville is still open, or it may be Crown Point. I don't know where it is. But. That place is really good, too. It doesn't have as good as red curry as what Exotic did. <clears throat> well, I grew up eating five-star Thai, and um, it's my favorite. I grew up never having Thai, ever, <laughs> until I moved to this area. Legit, that's real. Uh, but with the back to the box, I was kind of riffing on the dish that I had at Exotic Thai, but I'm missing components and just kind of playing on it. So I started with the rice. Cooked the rice down with some lime juice and some sriracha. Gave it kind of a creamier texture in the end, which was really, really nice. Uh, I actually expected it to be a little drier than that, so I was pleasantly surprised that it came out how it came yeah, out. Yeah, it was creamy. Uh, delicious. Then with the chicken, I uh, it's, before I did anything with the chicken, I took butter, melted it down, put pe the extra crunchy peanut butter inside of it, mixed it up, made it a real nice, kind of a nice, not too thick, not too runny texture. I dipped the chicken after I had sliced it up smallly into little strips, and then I fried it. And that was an awesome idea because that was really good, actually, I thought. Yeah, the eggs were good um, and really peppery. Well, I haven't got to the eggs yet because the eggs, you got to whisk them. I, I was telling you guys this. The secret to the perfect egg, you don't need milk or, or any kind of uh, – you can use – people use what is the sour cream. You don't have to. But uh, the best thing to do is aerate it until there's a fine layer of bubbles on the top of your eggs. So it's perfectly aerated. You drop them in. They're going to be nice and fluffy. Uh, so then the next thing I did was start working on the shrimp. And I just cooked the shrimp. up. They were already like pre-cooked shrimp, so you had to like technically reheat them. But you can like kind of give them a little sear. And I put a little bit of the Pinot Noir wine in there. And that's pretty much the dish. Assembled it, topped it with a little bit of sriracha. Bingo. Let's see a picture of it on the Instagram. Oh, man, look how good he is. Right mm -hmm. into the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we took pictures of what we ate on and put it on our foodies watching movies Instagram. And um, we also will be having more pictures uh, to put on our Facebook page as well awesome. to come. Sweet. Uh, you guys took some good pictures. I'm taking it. Yeah. I was fucking busy cooking. So. Yeah. And I took a little video of uh, you and AP doing the hot sauce. Oh, challenge. yeah. We should talk about that, too, before we get out of this. So, uh, so you guys coordinated the box a little bit. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have any idea what was coming from this? No. 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 W were there any guesses to what I might have done, or was it just like, oh, no, we were mostly just talking about like, well, maybe I'll bring this, maybe we'll bring this, and then we just kind of went our separate ways and did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the peanut butter was the wild card. I don't think I even told you when I was like, maybe. No, I didn't know you were bringing peanut butter. Yeah, I threw it as like a back of like, ah, peanut butter. I'm going to throw it in there. It made the dish because it changed everything. If I wouldn't have had that, I probably would have struggled a little bit more with what exactly to make. I probably would have done more of like a garlicky chicken and the better rice, but... Yeah. The peanut butter chicken turned out really good. I mm -hmm. was super pleased with it. Oh, me too. And the chicken that Lauren had brought from Whole Foods was like incredible. It was I've next never level. Seen a better piece of chicken. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, got the organic, yeah. boneless, skinless chicken breasts. 
Yeah, it was delicious. Tasty. The rice mm-hmm. was really good. I I liked the pomegranate seed garnish that you put on there because I put a pomegranate in the basket. <laughs> yeah, it was like the bizarre <laughs> one, and I was like, I don't yeah. really. I'll just garnish it with this. It don't... worked. It was a nice like citrus, well, not citrusy, but like um, refreshing, bright flavor. Yeah. To cut through that peanut butter chicken. Yeah, it was kind of saucy. We finished the meal. And you and I, AP, got talking about Hot Ones and, and some other future <laughs> possibilities down the road for one of the shows on the network. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a dual show. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but we were talking about that, and I was just like, you know, I've got like a sauce that's it's, it's pretty up there in heat. It's like second or third hottest that they would have on their thing. It's the first hottest from this company. It's the hottest sauce they make. And you're like, I'll try it. I was like, okay. So I was just going to have you try it. And then I was like, no, man. Like, I'll bro down with you. We'll try it together. So we did. We had to shrimp with this uh, Dawson's Hedonist Number 1 sauce. How did that work for you? How do you feel about that? I'm thinking about the tell from the video, but it, it started, like, it just started. Oh, it started in the, uh, like, in my, my right cheek and then just, just swarmed to the, over my mouth. And I was like. Oh. <laughs> oh man, he looked like he was pained. Like my face just turned red. He got sweating. beat red. His, he was sweating. He was panicking a little bit. Just started to start doing that awkward, that nervous laughing. Just like, <laughs> yeah, just like, you got nervous. Wine is a bad choice. <laughs> like some psychosis was going on. Like, ow, ow, ow. Did the almond milk help though? The almond milk did help. Because we don't, we didn't have regular milk. Right. And usually that's what people use to help neutralize. Yeah. That almond almond heat. milk worked pretty well. You guys don't do hot stuff. No, mm-hmm. not really. No. But I really want to bring someone on or someone's on and do the food, uh, do the hot ones challenge. The, the hot ones t- YouTube show. I love that show. Yeah, it's that's one of my favorite funny. shows. You know, what we should talk about that too. Is that Lauren saw something? We are foodies watching movies, but we are still foodies at heart, and that's important. You watched a show today for the first time you had never seen, and you watched Chopped. mm Hmm. I can't believe you've never seen Chopped. How was it? Like, what did you think? I thought it was good. I mean, I feel like now that I've seen it, I've seen a lot of shows just like it. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But that was what we, like, what, like, kind of what inspired the cook today. Yeah, the, the Chopped Basket Challenge. Maybe that's the episode title. I don't know. Sure. We'll figure it out when we get there. Uh, so I don't know where we want to really go next with the episode. If we want to stick with food, like you pick up where we left off from last episode. Oh, we could talk about the fact that we got these awesome cookies that we were decorating today. Oh my fall God. Project. You guys are going to have me do a thing. Yeah. Let's see if Nate can figure out who <sighs> made the cookies that you'll oh, see yeah. on the Instagram. Okay. I'll go get them. This is going to be interesting. Left. While I was cooking, you guys were decorating these cookies um, and I did not see, I saw literally like 30 seconds of one of these designs, which is indistinguishable at this point. Um, this is going to be really interesting. Okay. So, uh, I'll just describe them as I see them. Okay. So I have to preface this by saying <clears throat> I wasn't really trying. Um, <laughs> I just kind of made some derpy ass pumpkin cookies and I think they look silly. Oh, that's I'm fine. I'm a fan of all of them. I am a fan of all of them. As I look at them on this gigantic gold plate we put them on, they do look pretty radical. Hmm. Okay. So. And we'll definitely post pictures and put them on our Instagram so you guys can I'm gonna see guess our derpy pumpkins. This apple, which is not a pumpkin, is AP. Okay. It just. Because the leaf. Uh, the leaf? I don't. He's talking about that one, the poison apple looking one. This one? Poison apple? Oh, no, that's not me. Okay, shit. Well, I've already started off failing. This is great. <laughs> blowing it. Um, okay, so that that makes my guess R.I.P. This R.I.P. one is Lauren. Yes. Yes, okay. I okay, love okay. that one, the R.I.P. one. It looks really cool. Yeah. It's trippy as fuck. Okay, so... Ah, da, 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 I do not know. Okay, I'm going to go on a limb and guess that 
this guy with the lightning nose is a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I got two. He looks like a very jaded little. I still don't know who did this one. Nose. Okay. And you I'm just assuming. Tell you who did that and one? some no. did multiple ones. I'm just assuming everybody did two. Is my guess. I don't know if that's I did the case. three. Oh, is, is Sarah's on there? Everything. Two Sarah's of Sarah's. Sarah's are on there. Sarah's are. Um, I'm guessing. I know this one. Sarah's one's are Sarah. my favorite. This one is Sarah's because it's dope as fuck and it's a Walk Among Us cookie. You can't beat it. That's yeah, she cool. even did a little tiny piano and frosting. Ridiculous. And a spider. I love the spider. Yeah. With sprinkles. It's cool. Uh, V. Yeah, the derpy one, with the dramatic eyebrows. That's the I have that's yeah, eyebrows. the eyebrows. Yeah, uh, I kind of messed them up and didn't care enough to fix it, so I just went dramatic. AP. Sprinkle face? Sprinkle face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. V? Yeah, another derpy one. <laughs> okay, I like I that I actually one. tried to do a little play with our band logo on his mouth. It says W-A-U. W-A-U, I see it. <laughs> but it looks dumb. I see it. <laughs> He's just got a weird crooked smile. Yeah, he looks derpy. Sarah? Yeah, she did the... Jesus, that's like intense. Yeah, she did a pretty cool face with a double lock. That's ridiculous. So that <laughs> means this is Lauren's. Mm-mm. Nope, that's mine. Really? Yeah. I didn't finish that one, though. It looks like a poison apple. See, these threw me off because I was like, whoever did this one fucking did this one. They liked those colors. Well, I really I like liked Lauren's I really liked Lauren's color scheme with the, the RIP cookie. It was green and black, so I decided to do a poison apple looking one with green and are, black. Are these edible? Yeah, yeah they're edible. I just want to take pictures of them before we eat them. Yeah, it's all construction paste. Get them away them. from me. Yeah, because you're the I, worst sharer anyways. You'd eat them all. You're right. Worst. AP, where we left off last episode, you said that, and it hasn't left my head. Where? What do you mean? What's the last thing we left well, off with? Well, because I wasn't here. Yeah, that we were sucked, discussed. by the way. Was, was, that, was, was, yeah. that, was that the episode that you were supposed to watch Reality Bites, and then you were supposed to report back at the beginning of this episode and let us know? If you watched it or I not. I forgot to finish it. <gasps> oh, oh, no. no. Um, yeah, You're fuck. blowing it. I watched City of God. Okay, let's talk about that. I did something right. Warren had lent us uh, the movie City of God to watch for our podcast. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I didn't watch it with you because I've already seen it. And I thought it was a great movie when I watched it, but I felt like I didn't want to see it again because it was too sad for me. There are some pretty sad parts. It was emotional, movie. and I just didn't it, want to do that to myself times. again. I feel like the first time I saw it was probably like six years ago. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. ago. When it first came out, I think, is when I saw yeah. it. But I didn't want to watch it again because it was just, it was, I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. Man. <laughs> life sucks enough. It uh, was so good, though. Yeah, it was a great movie. That movie uh, is, uh, it's just, there's so much to talk about. Uh, the storytelling is brilliant because they put you in a scene in the movie that you're like not even sure what the fuck's happening. And then the payoff to that and you like realize what's going down is amazing, uh, especially with how the movie ends and the symbolism that the movie has like the beginning, the middle, and the end. And that is actually kind of just one story and one set of moments. It all revolves around the kids, Lil Z or little dice yeah. and rocket and fucked up. That movie is fucked up. It's awesome. It was really yeah. truly a surprise movie for me. Cause I, you, you, you described it to me, you know, on the last episode. And I thought to myself like, okay, cool. Boo. <laughs> uh, I just thought, to, I just, I thought to myself like, I'm not sure what I'm getting into with this movie, you know? And it starts off, and it's like this thing with this chicken, and I'm like, what in the fuck is this movie? I'm gonna, I'm hooked. Okay, what's going on? And then they take you back to, like, the backstory of these characters, mm-hmm. and they tell you this beautiful story of the kind of the harsh reality of life in that area of the world. And it's it's criminals and crazy shit, and... Drugs and, Drugs and violence and people killing their wives with shovels. I mean, yeah, it's it's intense. And the the story is like the whole movie, I think, hinges on my feeling that I thought that I was getting confused with what Rocket was going to actually become because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, he's going down the path to 
Like it's it, it, it's he's destined for it. It's all around him. Of course, that's not the case. No. But like the most fucked up of things happens throughout this movie often. Do you have the scene in the hotel? And there's the robbery, and the dudes take off, and then now they're wanted for multiple murders. What? Yeah, wasn't that Rocket's older brother? Yeah. It uh, starts with a G. I cannot remember. <sighs> Shit. Bad with names. Uh, spoiler alert, though. We should mention AP has not seen City of God yet. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> You're blowing it. It's okay because you need to see it. I think no matter what we say here, yeah. as long as I don't it's reveal. Not, it's not really like a big like spoilery movie, really. No. Not yeah, like that's Get one of those Out. where you just watch and see Not like happens. Get Out, which me and AP have seen, but you two haven't. Oh, we'll get to it. Such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Cannot wait to watch with you guys or be there as you're watching it. <laughs> I'm in. I'm all, I'm all in on that. Uh, so I just want to say City of God's story is interesting because it weaves. Yeah. You're in the present, then you're in the past, then you're you're in the future from the past, if that makes sense. Like yeah. the just evolving a little bit and you're slowly learning backstories of all these characters and what's going on and then you're in the present again in a whole different situation and then someone from the past comes back and you're like Oh shit, I thought this dude was who the story was going to start revolving around, but it's actually this little dice character who's not a little dice anymore. He's a little Zay or a little Z. Little, yeah, little Zay or a little Z. Well, I, it's hard to, uh, you know, it's yeah. foreign. I don't know. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's subtitles. It's inferred, okay? <laughs> that's, that's life. But uh, you start to realize he has this, like, lust for just doing the worst shit. Like, he just wants absolute control to the highest power. So he just, he he takes it. He's not afraid to say, nah, this is my fucking place now. And challenge every single person in uh, the city of God. Yeah. To, to be the ruler supreme. And it's weird because at first. Even though doesn't he end up getting Benny killed? Yeah, well, he actually kills Benny. Does he kill Benny? Because they're arguing at Benny's farewell party. Oh yeah, that's right. And um, because and then see, and that's another great story thing is like Rocket's almost with this girl, and that doesn't evolve into anything. But then she ends up with Benny. But then that ends up uh, tragically, and that's like the worst scene in the movie. I mean, not yeah. worst as in like it's just the most emotionally damning. I think. Yeah. Uh, to me, but. Like, Either that or when Knockout Ned's family is getting, like... Ooh, that's pretty fucked. That is a fucked up scene yeah. when they just gun that building down. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, is this movie hinges on, like, ultimate... I guess justice is maybe the way to say it. Oh, shit. This movie has one of the most fucked up scenes I've ever seen. When Lil, when Lil Zay shoots that kid in the foot. Oh, that was totally messed up. Uh, so the kids are like these. Like, they're like these little slum kids. It's little dice. Kinda... It's essentially a mirrored image of yeah. little dice when yeah. he was younger, right? And they just want to run the slums and do all this shit and be bad and be bad kids. And it's like that that whole like I don't know if you realize how much of a bad kid you really want to be, so I'm going to put you to the limit. And. He tells them, like, I'm going to shoot you either in your foot or your hand. You choose. Pretty sure the kid picks hand. He shoots him in the fucking foot. What the fuck? And then it just doesn't get better because I'm like, oh, okay, that's over. And then he's like, hands the gun to another kid and says, hey, pick one of them and kill him. And then you're in. That's all. That's it. And that was a weird thing about that character is, like, he essentially when – his empire is built, creates this peaceful environment almost. There's not a lot of fighting. There's not a lot of war or anything because yeah. he controls everything. And Carrot's got his own little area and whatever. And then ultimately he relinquishes that control and everything goes to shit. And it's like you're in fucking the middle of North and South Korea. 
And you were wondering why I didn't want to watch this movie again. Yeah, but it's so Just explain good. the whole reason why. <laughs> it's so good. It's it's a tragic movie. It's interesting. There is a line of text I don't want to share with AP because I think that is kind of awesome to learn after the fact. Uh, but the movie hinges on a bizarre uh, realization. At the end? At the very end. <clears throat> one singular line of text that's not said by anybody. It's just a, uh, just a, like a, here's a detail you might not have noticed. And it's, wow. It changes the, it, it literally, at the end of the movie, when you think you know the movie and you felt a certain way, it changes the movie. At least it did for me. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely up there for foreign films for me now. So how many pizza slices would you give it? <sighs> okay, so in all reality, I love this movie. However, I got to take a little bit away from it, a little bit, because it had so much death and some really sad moments. And as I was just like, okay, like do it for the podcast. Just get through this. And I did. It was fine. Uh, I think it's like a like four and a half pizza slices, but it's like a four cheese pizza <laughs> where they gate like they really it's a little too much like not but not in a bad way like it's just enough but it's just a little but it's just enough but it might <laughs> one too many slices and you're gonna be sick but if you right. you know if you can so I I loved it I'm really grateful that you suggested that to me because it has broadened my appreciation for dope movies if you know uh you're welcome <laughs> yeah i know i know i'm like i'm like kind of baffled here because i like am really hyped on this movie i watched it yesterday and was just like i cannot wait to discuss hopefully all of this uh so that looks like that's possible homework for you sir. yeah and i have to jump in though because earlier before we started recording, you were talking to me about the plot of Enter the Void. And I had fused those with you starting to help. I'm like, how's it going to get to that point? <laughs> Did you get confused? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. That's if funny. City of God. Uh, okay. So I told I said we should watch Enter the Void. And it, for some reason, isn't on Netflix now. Damn you, Netflix. I feel like you said it's because it's October. That's and they, right. And they're taking, they're taking all the, like, scary movies off for October and putting, like seasonal movies on or whatever they're putting they're taking off like some of the foreign films and some of the the space that are for movies that don't necessarily get played in favor of putting your horror films for the month of october okay like uh, they're trying to become more seasonally aware and and they've always done that i mean you're not looking at christmas movies right now I know, but I feel like the selection December, on Netflix horror movies has always been shitty though i heard that netflix is increasing their prices they are and they already I, I already had my Netflix subscription increased, like, within the last, like, two years, I think they yeah. did it, in 2015 or something. I feel like... I it's going like... to go up to, like, 13 bucks. Yeah. I read somewhere that that's because they're not really doing that well. Well... Well, they're producing so much original content, they need more money. Yeah. I yeah. guess... I guess what's that one show? What's it called? Shit. Uh, A Netflix Stranger show? Things? No, not Stranger Things. Stranger oh, Things is surprisingly... The least expensive show to film since eight. Since eight, that show was the most expensive Netflix That's film why they to show. It. Yeah, that that and because it like just I don't know. I feel like it did very well like in reviews, like, but mm -hmm. it just didn't, didn't do that well commercially. That. Yeah, it I did watch Stranger Things though, and I I'm excited for season two of that. Couple yeah. weeks, yeah. Yeah, I think since I think it might have just been they wanted to see if they could. You could probably see if they can get like two or three shows out with the same amount they were paying for the one show that maybe wasn't bringing them the excess they had hoped for. Well, I think with Netflix, they they uh, realized they could tap into that market with Orange is the New Black when they first started doing that. And then based off of the success of that show, they started rolling out more original content, thus needing to you know increase prices for subscribers. And... I don't know. I feel like the the original content is good. I like a lot of Netflix shows. There's just so many of them I can't keep up. Well, I think I shared this statistic before that like their hope is to get to at least like 50% or more original content. That's too much. See, yeah, I like the idea of Netflix when it was Netflix, when you can yeah, pick the fucking stream, movies you want to watch. You could stream whatever TV shows and whatever movies you wanted to watch pretty right. much. 
Like, I understand, like, it's a lot because rights are expensive, but and it's be- biting the hand that fed them. Yeah. Like, people are like, hey, you want right. to watch all I mean, of this I mean, because of Netflix, series? all of the, like, video stores are closing, and, like, where are you supposed to, like, rent your old shitty movie? I mean... <laughs> Everything's digital now. Family video is still a thing. I, still I know. Go there. I still have a family video in my town. My little son and I live close there, and we walk there all the time to get gumballs. Because if you get a yellow gumball, you get a free movie. And he's always getting gumballs there. <laughs> <laughs> family video is honestly the only place in this area that you can go to get movies, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's weird how that is a thing that doesn't exist anymore from earlier in our lives. I remember there used to be blockbusters. Yeah, there used to be there used to be this little this little like mom and pop like video rental store in Lowell. Um, it was no, it was on the corner because I grew up in Griffith. Oh, okay. It was on the corner of Broad and Main, mm-hmm. like on the south. The was it south like a movie gallery corner. or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now it's now it's like a florist shop or whatever. But I used to get movies from there all the time growing up. My mm-hmm. dad used to take me there, and he used to rent us. Pretty much whatever we wanted, which was probably, honestly, his mistake growing up. (laughs) (laughs) He would let us rent whatever we wanted for the most part. What's the worst movie you rented at a young age, if you can remember? Honestly. We're all friends here. (laughs) Mm, Probably. Worse isn't bad. Mimic. Mimic. I don't think I saw that. Is it like, got gross imagery? I have not seen it. I'm. T- I don't mean like bad, as in like maybe I didn't. Like, what was the one movie that you rented that you shouldn't have at a young age? Thank you. That I shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, like your parents shouldn't have let you rent that movie. Like Trilogy like, of Terror. Trilogy of Terror. Yeah. What is, what is that? It's it's this very it's this very. It's got Karen Black in it. I don't know if you know her. I feel like she was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Um. She plays like three different characters in this movie. No, I don't think I've ever seen this movie. I'm yeah. intrigued. Yeah. And in one of them, this is the only thing I remember. It's this tiny little doll that like has a knife and it like, it, she she's like a museum worker or mm-hmm. whatever. And, like, oh she's, my like, God, wait, I think I have seen this movie. Yeah. I think I just blocked that out and yeah, you just and it, like and triggered it, comes, it back into my... M- it chases her into <gasps> a closet and it like slices <gasps> the knife underneath the closet door. I totally remember that. Yes. Ew. Creepy. I thought you were going to say Faces of Death. No. Yeah, that's a... I've never seen it, but... I bet watching Trilogy of Terror now as an adult would probably be pretty awesome because yeah. Sarah and I just recently watched Puppet Master and I hadn't seen that since I was little and that movie kind of scarred me because it has, you know, evil puppets and stuff. <laughs> but watching it again as an adult, we were just like fascinated by how awesomely bad it was. Yeah. It's one of those. I was going to ask AP a question. It's weird because I feel like we have to catch up with you because you missed an episode. I did. I did listen to it, though. That was... was... Oh, well, thanks okay. for being a listener of our <laughs> own show. That's great. Um, <laughs> I like that I was ru- providing a running commentary in our message board. That was great, too. Yeah. Uh, but I have a question. Have you ever worked a fast food job? I did. I worked McDonald's. Oh, wow. Do we all share the McDonald's thing? Did you... No, I worked at... I never worked at McDonald's. I worked uh, at a Dairy Queen and Pizza Hut as a delivery gotcha. driver. And you worked at McDonald's and anywhere else? McDonald's. My original first job was at this really, this really crappy Mexican restaurant out in Valpo, and then in Crown Point called Desert Moon. Ooh, I never heard of that. Yeah, okay. it was like it was like just this really crappy. Like it just only maybe had like two or three stores, max in Northwest Indiana. Hmm. And my first job, I trained out there for maybe like two weeks in Valpo, and then I moved to Crown Point for maybe like two or three months before I got the job at McDonald's. Hmm. Nice. McDonald's is a fun, weird gig to have. Oh yeah. Do you have any horror stories from from being like tales from a fast foodie or um, you know things that have happened that you recall that were just like holy shit moments in life? Yeah, because um, I worked at the classic rock and roll McDonald's. Oh, oh fun. dude, on um, Vermilion. Uh, Vermilion. Yeah, 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 shit, yeah. And I remember um, someone. Remember how like there's those mop buckets full of like the rags with like the sanitizer liquid? Yeah. So someone put one of those over by an electrical outlet and splashed water in it and started a small fire. <laughs> While oh you gosh. were working? Yeah, I was like But like it wasn't like bad, but like made smoke. There was no fire. It was just like it 
sparked and smoked and stuff. They're like, don't pull the fire alarm. We'll call like, because if they call a fire, they have to shut down for the night. All they didn't want to do that. It, like, <laughs> I was working a closing shift. It Too was much just... red tape. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna like wrap into back to the rock and roll McDonald's because the you're talking about the one on North Vermillion. Yeah. Okay. So, like, right across from Arby's. Yeah. There used to be an old McDonald's there. Mm -hmm. I worked at that McDonald's until the day they stopped that McDonald's to tear it down. To build a new one. To build a new one. I transferred from Hoopston to help Danville because they were in such a need for people, right? But I was, like, probably 17 at the time. It was the middle of summer. Maybe I was 18. I I don't really recall. And... uh, I had to get up in the early in the morning and go there and I worked and it was fucking miserable because everyone that worked there, I didn't know they were like the worst kind of people for the morning shift. You know how people that can be just like shitty at McDonald's. And I will never forget one day I snuck into the basement for like 20 minutes to take a break and just ate a shit ton of the McDonald's cookies <laughs> <laughs> in that basement. I was like, fuck this place. Well, the old one had a basement, cookies. didn't it? It did. The old one had a basement. Yeah, they, they, they don't have that anymore. But, so did uh, the Lowell McDonald's. They had a basement. Yeah, the Lowell McDonald's is very similar to the Hoopston McDonald's that was there before they did not demolish it it became something else and now they have that strip a, mall one they have they have a yeah funny thing is i also worked one shift at the hopeston mcdonald's weird really? i worked there the christmas party they had so like all the hopeston employees could go so they ported some danville ones to the hopeston one makes for the night. sense that's so course. i remember they have like, their own christmas party at mcdonald's oh yeah dude that's a huge thing Jesus. I, don't remember, I don't remember where it was at <laughs> was that was always at like the the one mcdonald's or something yeah, didn't they, um, wasn't it South? The one with the big area, like the big party room? Yeah, I, I think that's Danville South. I can't remember yeah. what they called it. So, But that, that was my first job, and I loved it. Played softball. That was fun. McDonald's, we had our own softball I team. Did. Mm-hmm. Wasn't a part of that? Okay. Yep. <laughs> I couldn't stand working in fast food. I hated it. Oh, I hated it, too. I did two terms in McDonald's. It was awful. I hated being a pizza delivery driver, too, because people... Just they don't understand the concept of tipping. Like they see that there's a delivery charge on the ticket, but they think that that goes to the driver, but it doesn't. Wait a minute. I have a I have a concept question for you. Hmm. People don't understand the concept of tipping. We're a food podcast. Uh huh. Maybe we should explain to people how they tip. Do you think people don't know? Like, really? We need well, to start educating people more? Maybe people should be educated on it. I, I was a short order cook uh, this past summer for a while and I very rarely got tipped but what people don't understand is that I was the only person in the kitchen so I had to make all the food by myself for the entire restaurant and it was very stressful and very difficult and if they give tips like carry out orders the the chef the cook is supposed to get them and sometimes the you know, sometimes you wouldn't get them, and sometimes people just didn't even think to tip you because you don't think to tip the cook. But when you're depending on them as part of your paycheck, then it makes it really difficult. And people don't understand that, like, as a server, you know, if you don't get tipped, you're actually losing money because you still have to tip out the bus boys that are that or the the bussers that clean up the plates and you know the expediter or whomever you know. So you end up paying for part of their dinner because you didn't get tipped. It's pretty shitty. I typically like to leave like between fifteen and twenty is what I, I think always is. leave twenty percent yeah. just because. Even like when I'm doing carry out, if I'm just going up to, I always give them something just for bringing me my food because I know how shitty it is to work in the food industry sometimes, which is why I'm no longer doing it. I'm super, I'm super pleased that I can just start cooking for myself again and, you know, make stuff that I enjoy cooking instead of a billion fucking sandwiches, you know, in a day yeah. for people that don't tip me. I typically do 18 to 20% and I usually round to the nearest hole dollar amount because i hate you like doing, i don't i don't do i don't like doing the exact 20 percent mm-hmm. i either do more or less depending on what it is to the nearest dollar amount like See, cost an easy, plus an tip, easy way to do the tipping my mother taught double, me how to do no or move the decimal and double no it. so she told me just whatever the bill is uh 
take ten percent of it, find it, figure out what ten percent of it is, and then just multiply that. Well, that if you um, if you move the decimal you get 20%. one place to the left and then double that amount, that would be right. There's a lot of different ways to do it, to figure it out. The easiest way for me was just the ten percent route because if, like you've got a thirty-two dollar bill, then it's like three dollars twenty cents, right. six dollars and, and forty it, cents. And there's your tip, right, right there. Casino life gave me math. Yeah, Nate's a numbers guy. Sometimes. Uh, so we should go back to something we did on the last episode. You had seen The Departed. Mm-hmm. Lauren had finally saw So I Married an Axe Murderer. Which I'm super happy about. I watched The Prestige and almost all of Reality Bites, which I totally forgot that I should have <laughs> totally finished, which next foodies, I promise. It's actually, okay. no, the, the next foodies is going to be different. We can actually talk about that at some point in this episode, too. But AP. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's 20 years later, right? Fight Club was 97? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's right. You hadn't seen Fight Club. I hadn't seen Fight Club. Apparently, everyone else has seen it like a dozen times. Okay, yeah. Fight Club joke. Are we allowed to talk about it? No. no. This episode actually... We, what? What are we talking about? <laughs> Not talking about anything. Nothing? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, good. Anyways. Uh, First rule of Project Mayhem. <laughs> Ask questions. So God, what that movie is so did, fucking good. What did you think? What's your um, quick reaction to it? Not really quick, but you know. I think for the majority of the movie, I was going, what? Like, I was like, I didn't know what the movie was. The movie was rapidly evolving into a different movie altogether. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I remember, like, watching, like, like, for me, it felt like the beginning of it reminded me a lot of Office Space. Okay. Like, yeah. I feel like you could almost With do Ed that. S- you could almost do this, like, take that same cast Add Brad Pitt, and you could almost do the same movie with like the main character from that and all the people. Like, um, the meatloaf character could have been the one with the stapler. It could have easily. It would have worked. Yeah. It could. You could almost done that. It like, translates. It could have almost evolved the same way. Like he was sick of his job, got into this whole thing. It, but I loved Fight Club. I thought it was a really excellent movie. Um, I, I guess we don't really need to worry about spoilers as this movie came out a very long time ago. Twenty years. Yeah, I, but what I love most about Fight Club is how it still seems to be relevant. Like, I still hear Tyler Durden references in social media and stuff, and um, every time, of course, I hear the Pixies, where is my mind, I think about the end of that movie. I just don't, I don't think know. you could make that movie now. Like, that same movie, I don't think could get made now. Because the not? amount of, like, destruction of buildings, like, kind anarchy. of the anarchy and stuff, I don't think that would sit well with the culture we're in today. I don't know. Like post nine eleven, post all of the I did see the rioting, trailer that for something called Geostorm. Disaster Geostorm? porn? Yeah, pretty much. It's... I mean to tie it into what you're talking about in like today's reality, they're making some movie about um a weather machine that controls weather patterns on Earth and some bad guy is trying to use it to create destructive tornadoes and hurricanes. Like, basically and... that whole plot was like to like dissolve hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff, but it's like someone's like Oh, you can just flip a switch essentially and like right. create chaos. And there's like storms. tons of conspiracy stories that have been going on for years about how the government actually does have like some kind of weather controlling system um, already, like somewhere. I don't know, but uh, yeah, this is the world we're living in. AP. Uh, Damn! Now this episode will never be heard because the FBI and people are going to take it down because we <laughs> talked about their weather machine. <laughs> well, now we're talking about a horrible movie called Geostorm, which might not be horrible. I haven't seen it. It has it... Gerard Butler in it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we were talking about Fight Club. How much? I, I almost, I almost just quoted uh, Workaholics. You mean Gerard Butt Cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love but that show. Actually, I, I wrote a few Rude. notes down that I didn't want to. F- Yes, read your notes. Let us hear what your thoughts are upon uh, this movie. He had homework. <laughs> yeah. He had to take oh, notes. Oh, one thing. It took me almost half the movie to realize that that was actually Meatloaf. Really? Really? You were just like, is that Meatloaf? I was oh, like, I loved Meatloaf why does that look that familiar? Bob, and I was like, Bob, Bob with and the I, and I was like, why would yeah. Meatloaf let them put bitch tits on him? I His don't name understand. is Robert Paulson. <laughs> what about Bob? God, that movie is so fucking weird and oh it's so good and also though. one thing that I like, love the scenery he's talking about you're like you're having a fight with your imaginary friend <laughs> you know oh uh, the one thing that like um well one the cinematography was amazing like yeah. that whole th- like 
the scene with a uh, Tyler Durden and uh, Helena Bonham's character was like that. Like the sex in the head was just like the the cinematography they did for that was like amazing and just everything else was to just... make sure that they never were like in the room at the same time. Yeah. So she never knew, or so he thought that they were having conversations, but yeah, it was well, his imaginary friend. One thing yeah. that like. I so she was it, like, what the fuck is going on? Who, who are you talking about? Another thing I didn't think about, like, I was thinking about it again on the ride over here, was that Jared's Leto, Jared Leto's character in this movie could easily become Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. You see, he gets oh, all this hair. Smash out. He has platinum blonde hair. They have that green paint that they used for that one building. Oh, yeah. You're you could, so good, dude. You could easily... <laughs> That's have, a good mashup. Like... All it took was like some green paint to slide it through his hair and be like, that's Jared Leto's Joker. Some iron cap teeth because he got them all punched out by Tattoos. Edward Norton. Yeah. Like, Man, that was a tough movie. That was a real tough movie. Like diving into the the brain of somebody who would literally blow up his entire fucking life because he was so sick of it and uh, was sick enough to just lose it and wow. get out all of his anger and aggression and repress, repressed things. That was an interesting movie. That movie had a, the great twist, because like you guys have been talking about, Tyler Durden and uh, Ed Norton's character are one and the same. Yeah, they're, dun, dun, dun. they're the same person. And it's oh. and when you find like, I remember the first time I saw Fight Club and I realized that that's what was happening. I was just like, oh my god, my mind was just blown. <laughs> and I don't see a lot of movies like that these days where I'm like, oh my god, my mind was blown. It's like crazy that twist in Memento. Oh, yeah. We keep also, talking about Memento. That was a great movie. Great. We should probably watch it again soon. Yeah, I'm down. Totally. Gotta watch Get Out first. Yeah, you guys need to watch Get Out. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. I'm excited about, about the this twist? movie. It's, a, it's got an amazing twist in it. Damn. I went to go see it twice in theaters. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> once with my best friend and then once with my cousin, which honestly isn't that many times to go see a movie. Well, in this era, yeah. Yeah, movies are expensive. Movies are too expensive. And if you were like, oh, like you probably went the first time you saw it, and then did you tell your cousin, I need you to go see this? Yes. And then you took them. <laughs> yes. See, I think so, you told me awesome. to see it the first time we actually like hung out. Wasn't that the one you and Keith had gone to see? Mm. Or was that, no, that was Night Out or something like that? That was Girls Trip. Girls Trip. Okay. There's like eight of those movies right now. Yeah. There's Night a lot Out, of Girls Trip. Ladies, uh, debauchery movies. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Girl's Trip that? was really good, though. I recommend everyone go to see it. Or, no, you're going to have to rent it now. It's not even in theaters anymore. Damn, missed the boat. What's up? I have one more thing that I... Was that, um... You know that Three Days Grace song, Pain? Okay, yeah. Every time they had a fight scene, I could just listen to that song in my head and just hit it. Okay. You know that song, Pain, yeah. that Three Days Grace? Yeah, yeah, I know it. It's just, I feel like it could fit. It was like... Down, a tra- down, down, down. It's like a trailer for that movie yeah. now. We'll just oh, have yeah. that song. That, just I, punch the- It probably exists on the internet. Somebody sure has probably someone made did a that. Cut of that. The soundtrack for Fight Club was good, too. Yeah. The movie was solid. What would you give it, man? I don't know the pizza, pizza slices. slices. I feel like I really need to watch that movie again to get the full extent of it. But I would say it's probably about four for right now. Four out of five. Solid four. Nice. Like I think I'd probably like it a lot more. I think I need to like digest it, watch it again, and then I could probably give a more... Like thoughtful answer on how I'd rate it. That's definitely a second viewing experience. As is the Prestige, I think. Ooh, we're gonna do that. Maybe even tonight. I would love to watch the Prestige with you. Yeah, that it, was a great movie, and I loved David Bowie in it. And I'd have, watch that movie anytime. Have you guys seen the trailer for that uh, new Hugh Jack movie that looks almost like a sequelish to Prestige? Said what? It's um, it's one where he's playing P.T. Barnum. Oh, the, uh, the circus one? Or like the showman or something? I feel like I vaguely recall this movie's existence, but I haven't seen a trailer for like, it. It's just him being that type of like, he's the, sh- the, the showman, yeah, that, that same kind of personality. And I, th- I don't know if it's going to have the same kind of gut feeling, but it looks like almost like a in-kind sequel to it. Hmm. Interesting. Or very similar. I feel like since it's October, we should maybe try and talk about our favorite scary movies, even though it doesn't even really feel like Halloween yet. Well, we did decorate these little pumpkin cookies, all spooky, and uh, we were we were at the store earlier today, and they had hilarious, cute skeleton themed jewelry for three dollars and i'm i bought myself a choker with skeleton hands on it so i'm feeling spooky we can talk about halloween shit 
Okay. Favorite. You were you just watched Hocus Pocus, which is like the one thing you have to do in October, right? It's like one of your are favorites. We, it's we one of my favorites. Talk about what's happening to Hocus Pocus. Uh, yeah, we need to talk about that. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Probably not very good. What are they doing with it? Okay, uh, so go ahead. They're gonna do a Disney Channel original movie version of Hocus Pocus. It's gonna like be a, a reboot, Hokey though. Pocus. It's not gonna be a sequel with the same cast. No, it's gonna be a. Just they're making the movie again with. They're gonna Disney Channel it, and I'm not, I'm not pleased. I want no. Bette Midler. No, well, I want I want all of them back. I want all of them. I think they talked about like there was talks they were gonna do a sequel with the original cast. Yeah, there and then have it been talks apart, about and it. Then it. And I've been following that story for the past few years because I'm a dork I mean, and a if '90s you think about kid, it, and if I you love think about that it, shit. How are they really gonna remake it? Because they'll probably do a modern version of it. I know, but it's just right. like Bette Midler and Kathy and Jimmy. We're not young when they made this movie. Right. I and don't think it's going to be like the same Sarah characters. Je- and Sarah Jessica Parker was younger than the both of them, but she still probably wasn't even that young. So it's like if they're going to do a reboot, I mean, who are they going to cast as each person? Just because it might they, be they, no kind of, they kind of they kind of they kind of just each right. And it's probably each... just going to be an entirely different story, but the same like premise or something. I agree. <laughs> okay, no. I used to watch Hocus Pocus. Um, I I still do it. I watch it every fucking year around Halloween, you know. And I've watched it every year since I was little. It was always my jam, and um, that's a great movie. I recommend it. I give it uh, four and a half pizza slices on the spooky meter. Ooh, spooky meter on the Halloween movie. Should meter. we give it like four and a half spiders if it's a spooky meter? Sure. I like Spibies? it. Why not? I don't know. That was the first thing that went to my mind. <laughs> Giant spiders. Ugh. What uh, else? What other Halloween movies have we been recently watching? Oh, I don't watch that shit typically. Why not? I'm really upset that Ash vs. the Evil Dead is not going to be back until next February. I didn't mm-hmm. get to watch that. I had to cancel my like subscription to a bunch of shit because it was too expensive. So I missed that one. And I also missed the Evil Dead musical that apparently was com- like around a few really? like a year or two ago. Yeah, but yeah, I always and, liked that. And an Evil Dead musical? Yeah, there was an Evil Dead musical, allegedly. I didn't get to see it, though. <laughs> In Chicago. Yeah, it was coming to Broadway. I think we're talking about horror movies. I need to just mention my favorite classic. Which would be A Nightmare on Elm Street. The original? Yeah. Absolutely. 1984. That movie makes Classic. me laugh so hard. Now, yes. The scene where he cuts off his finger and like says, Tina. like, And he's just smiling at her while he like slices his finger and she just like freaks the fuck out. That always makes me laugh so hard. Young Johnny Depp. <laughs> my, favorite, First my, favorite, my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street was the third one. That was Dream Warriors. Yes. Oh, I bet you'd like what? our friend Cy and his lady Kristen. What was the yeah. one? We watched that where with he. Them. Uh, they love that movie. It was like the. It broke the third, uh, fourth wall kind that of. That was Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Yeah. And uh, they I had the cast, that. the cast of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Playing themselves. Playing themselves, and Freddy manifests himself and into, into the real their, world. Into their and, lives. They're, and do you think they're their characters, or is he. I think he knows they're just them. Okay. Like and because the 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 bit mm-hmm. is that it's been in their head so long that it's like he manifested from their thoughts. Interesting. It's fu- it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It, it's really good though. Horror movies are so funny. Uh, I also loved Freddy vs. Jason. I love that movie God, too. That movie's so good. It's a. It's he a, was mine. <laughs> that, yeah. That movie, uh, I always hoped that they would have done like a Freddy versus Jason versus Pinhead sequel, just because I, I didn't Mike like. Miles, left it, I didn't like Hellraiser. They left it open ended. Yeah. You didn't like. You don't like. What was it? Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Pinhead. Hellraiser is one of the only scary movies that I have not been able to sit through entirely. Yeah. Just too much. I saw it in in the nineties when I was probably too little. Isn't that to see Clyde it? Barker. Yep. Yeah, I don't know, I, but it's it fucked me up when I was little, and I never wanted to watch it again. I guess, yeah. So I never did. Yeah, speaking of classic horror movies, have you talked about the return of a classic horror character, the new Michael Myers movie? The so, whole, oh yeah, Jamie Paul, Lee Curtis is re- coming back is coming as Laurie Strode forty years later or something like that. Weird. Yeah, I think we posted an article about that on our Foodies Watching Movie I don't th- Movies. Oh no, we posted that on. Uh, 
our band page. Yeah. Because it was Halloween it, related. Yeah, and we haven't. Uh, I remember. Yeah. I remember Halloween. I remember Halloween. Didn't it come out in like 1978? So won't it be 40 years yeah, later? Yeah, it was 40 years ago. Yeah. It'll be 40 years later by the time the movie comes out. That's mm-hmm. wild. So 1998 was when Halloween H2O had to have come out. That was. It did come out in 1998. Gosh. I still remember the video box cover, a family video of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never understood that movie title until right in this very second. Halloween H 20th anniversary. Yeah. 2-0. Wow. Halloween. So they were talking Halloween. about water. Halloween water. <laughs> thought they were talking about water. <laughs> Halloween water. I was so confused. Oh, you got an epiphany. Like, That's great. Mike Myers versus Jason. Halloween H 2-0. We've got to talk about Jason this week. Two days from today, folks. Friday the 13th. Holy shit. Two days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when this drops. That's we have right. to future trip. You have to. I'm, I haven't been future tripping, to, sorry. This is Wednesday like, right now. This is Did weird. time travel? Today is Wednesday when you're hearing this, folks. And it is Wednesday. Where there was a great poor rapport yesterday, episode six. How was it? Oh. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on. I only did that because I know in present time he hasn't recorded it yet. <laughs> so oh. it was just like it went fantastic. Okay. So yeah, you were talking about the Jasons. News is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love those movies. Jason Takes Manhattan was like probably the first one I saw. Didn't really there, out of order. Wasn't there one in space? Oh, Jason X? Fuck yeah, Jason X is amazing. Spice. Oh, come on. Oh, it's gr- It's terrible. It's <laughs> so terrible. awful, but it's, it's so It's so great. awful. But it's so good at the same time. They you go have back that one on Blu-ray? Do you have that one on no. DVD? No. I, actually, I might have Jason. No, I don't have any um, Jason movies on Blu-ray yet. But uh, I do have Freddy vs. Jason on DVD somewhere. But uh, Jason X, there's like a cargo ship that goes to like a desolate earth and they're digging for artifacts and they pull up the tomb of Jason and like he reanimates in space. And I will say, cool as... It's amazing. It is. It's the (laughs) the coolest fucking kill in any of the Jason movies. He dunks this chick's head in liquid nitrogen, freezes her face, and then smashes it on the counter. Wow. Savage. Well, I, I just remember seeing like the disc cover, and it was like him in like a metal mask. I'm like, where would he get a metal mask from? Like, this... <laughs> Go back to Camp Crystal Lake. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, and then that's another thing. There's like a simulation of camping, and it's got like kind of you know provocative women that are definitely naked and partying out in the woods, and he like in the simulation beats them to death in their sleeping bags but like they're not there it's real the movie's fucking <laughs> super like, bizarre hey. it's a dumb movie I, I liked it kind of sort of there's just so many of those sequels to like classic movies jason goes to hell was good i mean if we're talking about that, those movies uh Have any of you seen the mist yeah the i saw mist. the mist i read the book the stephen king book the yeah. mist and that book fucked me up that was such a sad scary story what's it about i've never seen it it's about this small main town <laughs> it's always about a small main town yeah it's, it's, if it's there. stephen king it's a small main town <laughs> yes mm-hmm. castle Rock. and in this town there's all these people and they're in the supermarket and they're all going grocery shopping and this mist comes and like envelops the town and in the mist there are these monsters like these creatures, creatures. That like slowly begin to like attack smaller and smaller groups of them. And it's the story is about a father and his kid, and they're trapped in a supermarket because they can't leave because of the mist. And everyone dies at the end. I'm not the telling end. anything. I'm not telling you. I'm, I'm not, not probably gonna see it. That's Just fine. I have it on Blu-ray. It was, and the Blu-ray the, the Blu-ray version of the mist comes with a black and white version. Really? Ooh, Ooh that's yeah. scary. That entices me. Did to it want make to it scarier? It. Um, I don't know. Did it do anything for you? Not really. I still, I still kind of prefer the original, just because the original, like, there's so much blood. Yeah, Jesus. it's a fucked up story. Yeah. You know, I did. Obviously, I thought the book was better than the movie. And I didn't. I read recently that they're going to be doing another. The Mist? Isn't it going to be like a mini series? They did it, they did it, it, it's it, done. They did it for Spike. Oh, it's it, done, did it already though, happen? Yeah. It's it's done. It's already over with. It started in like June and it ended probably in like August. I heard good things about it. I just never got a chance to see it. I didn't yeah. see it. I missed it. I, I don't have I read, Spike, so it's I don't. Supposed, it's I supposed to be coming to it. Netflix. See what I did there? Yeah. Well, for eleven ninety nine. That was spaghetti better, fingers. <laughs> they better put all the stuff on there. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, shit, I was going to say something and I don't recall. Oh, you know what we really probably should talk a little bit about is what we're doing next week. Yes. And the plan for Foodies Episode 4, which is kind of symbolic because while it's Foodies Episode 4 of Season 2, we're in Episode 3 today, uh, Episode 4 is actually Episode 10 that we've done of this specific show. We're having the first supper. And the goal is to get the entire network together. Looks, everybody from looks, every podcast. Looks like it's going to happen. You know, just like everything seems like it's going to line up. And we are going to have done multiple podcasts throughout the day across various shows on the network. I think six of the eight shows record next Sunday. And we're going to do the foodies um, first supper. And we're going to have every member of the network on our show. Yeah. That'll be We're going to be cooking and taking some videos. The intro Maybe we will might even take... be doing some live Facebook videos. Who knows? The intro will take like 10 minutes to interest everyone. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. nuts. I'm probably going to like. There's going to be a lot of people talking over each other Nate and eating. And Sarah and Veronica and Lauren and Andrew and Blaine. And I was like, oh my God. Let's see. Can you keep going? Can you do it all? No. No, save <laughs> it. Save it. Save it for next week. Because, yeah, next week you got to do the intro, bro. Because yeah. V did episode one. And I did episode two, and Lauren just did episode three's intro. That's all me. So, so I can introduce the first supper. No pressure. And I'm going to accidentally call it the last supper. I'm be like, whoopsie. Well, it's now the last supper. Foreshadowing or something. Goodbye, guys. Ugh. Later. We'll never be in the same room again. No, oh, that's Aww, sad. No. Ugh. Dark. Uh, I hope not. That's going to be a long weekend, though. Well, we got two shows. Yeah, our band has some show, some big shows. Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. and then Sunday is Which... podcast catastrophe. Yeah, it's going to be a long, intense weekend. Pod McGinnis. We have Pod to travel McGinnis. to – where are we traveling to this weekend? We're going to – Fort Wayne. We're going to Fort Wayne. Brass Rail. And then we're driving down to Indianapolis. Punk Rock Night. At the Melody Inn. And then we're going to drive up to Lafayette for the podcast extravaganza. The Pod – Pod – Pod – Pod – Pocalypse. Pod – Pocalypse. That, it's hard. It's, you got to get it, was... it. Pod – Pocalypse. It's bizarre. Uh, I'm excited for that. We've got, like I said, almost every show recording. We're going to have some special guests on different shows that never have been on before. But the whole thing was like to have everybody in the same room together. And we're, as we record this, yesterday was the two month anniversary of the Journey into Comics Network, um, which was this past weekend for those of you who are listening now currently. Unless you're a patron, and then you're probably listening to this sometime Monday. Bizarre how life works. Uh, so I just thought like it would be super cool to get everybody together for a fucking picture. And at first it was just like, you you might be in the area, maybe podcasting with Blaine. Like maybe we can do this picture. And I was like, maybe Lauren would come down for this picture. And then I was like, wait a minute. What if we just go balls to the wall and plan like a schedule and have everybody recording pretty much different making parts of the day and make it a fucking event mm-hmm. and get jazzed because this is a little if we can pull this off my plans for episode 200 of journey into comics are going to be easy right. so this is really kind of the test run to see if we can pull this off right because i remember the whole idea came up was like because the cw shows come back i'm like nate you're going to be in indiana blaine's in indiana if i come down there we could talk about the cw shows like that's a great idea and then it's just it took a life of its own it started with we were going to do poor rapport and do talking about the cw shows and then it was like well you guys got to do podcastrophy too and then it was like, Blaine and I have still have never met. Well, if we're Don't. gonna, if if that's gonna be happening, then we might as well film Game Addicts. Sarah's gonna be there. She wanted to do Game Addicts with the guys. Might as well make that happen. And it was like, be very careful about how, how you I word say the what next you're thing. about okay. to say because I okay. see you looking at me. Veronica, what? <laughs> I will be a, a guest on the Butt Stuff podcast. Thank you, thank you. That's the only way you can say that. Butt Stuff, yeah, that which was... is actually really funny. I've been listening to it. It's it cracks so me up. Good. They, 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 they crack my shit up. Those would you rather's? Some of those were horrendous. I think the one, uh, yeah, that was the one they started with would the with the would you rather uh, if your husband and your father switched bodies. Whose body would you rather sleep with to get him to switch back? And it's Why like, Why did you oh. send that to them? That was I, so I found the list. I was like, These were awful. And I was like, Those were really awful. And I said, oh, I, Yeah, that one was, or if, uh, Poor Shane. if you're halfway inside your, oh. your mother and your mother, if your father was halfway inside you, would you go forward or backwards? What the 
fuck, man? Like, where did you even find that? <laughs> it came up, like, on, like, what were you BuzzFeed at? or something. And I was like, mm. oh, God. The Fucking horrific well, Would You yeah. Rather. But, but Stuff podcast. Nice save. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they talk about all kinds of interesting things. So None of which I'm is excited to be a guest <laughs> on that show. Yeah, it, it should be a lot of fun that weekend. Yeah, uh, we're all looking forward to it. Doing the first supper is going to be really cool because we're going to have an opportunity to kind of get what what my plan is is because there's going to be so many people we'll probably just have like five or six mics total live and we'll just pass them around and just oh you're going to talk okay cool anyways i'm sorry that i'm planning live that sometimes you do that in podcasts happens <laughs> but uh we're doing logistics i'm trying to think we should talk about what we go- what we're going to watch next like what okay let's do some homework ass- assigning yeah let the right one in let the right one in. I've seen that movie. I I have seen that movie. I'd watch it with you. Okay. Which version? The original or the remake? The original. Okay, then yeah, I'll watch that movie. It's sitting right over there. She lent it to us. Okay, great. Awesome. AP, what are you going to watch? What does he need to see? Well, Killer Joe is on his list. Uh, but I think that... L- okay. So we're going to try to bounce this around interestingly. Okay. Because I think I realized to get us all four to watch the same movie might prove difficult. So far, it has proved extraordinarily difficult. Mm-hmm. So let's all watch Get Out on episode six. We should do that. I love that idea. But what I was going to say is, what if we all are assigned a different movie and have to watch it and kind of have like a little report on hype it? report? You know, uh, so you could do Killer Joe. I can yeah, do Let the Right One In. Yeah. What movie will you watch, though? Hmm. You can watch hmm. Get Out if you want, or do you two want to watch it together? Well, AP thinks it would be cool to do that on episode six, like together. the four of us. Watch it and then do the episode. Oh, okay. So we have an opportunity to... So what do you want me to watch? What do I need to watch? Oh, I don't know. I know what Lauren needs to watch. Okay, what does Lauren need to watch? The Prestige. Okay. It, oh, yeah. It's on Netflix. You okay. have to. Because we're going to rewatch it anyway. Uh, have you seen that, AP? I don't think so. Oh, this changes everything. God damn. That's... Uh, Lasai, I don't know what to do here. You can watch it and report back to us if you have, if you feel so inclined. If I can get through Killer Joe, I'll, I'll watch that movie as well. Okay. Cool. Remind me. I'll, Anything I'll, for me? Uh, Anybody got any 40 suggestions? 47 meters down. No. Okay. Think about who I am as a person. Yeah, you and then base up your recommendation off of what you know about me. <laughs> Because I have very limited time as I work a couple jobs and I'm in a band and a, a single Netflix mom. Netflix the best bet so for you. I need to have something good. I you should, know. You should watch Holidays. Holidays? It's oh, that's the, got... Uh, it's the horror anthology. It's like each holiday gets a like a little... Like a cl- vignette? Yeah. Kevin Smith like directed one. Kevin Smith directed the Halloween I like one. those shitty old creep show movies. There, some like are vignettes. a little graphic, but it's overall really good. What's it called? Holidays. Holidays. I was going to say she should watch 10 Cloverfield Lane. I've seen that. Also good. You saw 10 Cloverfield Lane? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Yep. Those are two different movies, really. I saw that. Like last 20 minutes it really just changed the whole movie. It yeah. really did. That was a fucked up movie. Like if that if she would have That was scary. I, almost, like, well, I can't want to talk ugh. about that now, but yeah, no. Yeah. Um So many movies, so little oh, time. Yeah. Holidays, huh? Lawrence, do you have any suggestion for me? Given my limited time span to watch movies, anything I have to see. I'm trying to think of what I had in that picture at home of like scary movies that you could maybe watch one. We have Netflix has been doing good this Halloween season with scary movies. You can maybe watch if you want to. You can try watching Raw. Raw? Yeah. Okay. I can get it. Okay. Is it on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. We got it. We got it. Easy. Okay. Well, I've got some good suggestions, and I will figure out what the fuck I'm going to watch and report back to you. Okay. Yeah. Next time. Excellent. Well, is there anything else we want to cover before we call it a day? I'm not sure where we want to go from here. No, I think we need to should we talk see about, some of these Should we cookies? talk about that creation with the fried green tomato chips? Ooh, yeah, we we, we had talk, an inspired idea for our appetizer today while we were waiting for Nate to do his chopped mystery basket challenge thing. Um, Sarah and I had picked out some Boris and cheese from the store and some of these 
delicious crackers. And then in the impulse lane at the register, she picked up a bag of uh, Lay's fried green tomato potato chips. And then we were sitting here eating them, and uh, we decided to put the cheese on the potato chips. And it was next level fucking delicious. Heavenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was super gardeny and really bright and zesty. And the cheese on these potato chips was just excellent. It was like a different take. I said this. It was like a different take on a sour cream and onion chip with French onion dip on it. Right. And she and I had said in the car on the way back here, I was like, God, we need to, we should have got some dip. Like, I really wish we would have got the French onion dip for these chips because we were jamming them in the car because we hadn't had breakfast and we were starving. But, um, yeah, it turned out really good with the boars and cheese. And I think that there's still a bunch left that we should probably go eat. <laughs> I'm totally into that. Uh, well, we'll get into the plugs before we call it an episode. As always, folks, you can check out Foodies Watching Movies on all of the different social media sites, whether it's Facebook at Foodies Watching Movies, on Twitter at Film Foodies, Foodies Watching Movies on Instagram. Uh, always listen to us on the Journey Into Comics Network at journeyintocomics.com or on all the different podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Pod Chaser, I'm trying to think, Overcast, Downcast, there's like too many, if you don't know how to find a podcast, I don't know how you're listening to this right now and I'm a little confused, <laughs> uh, but we appreciate you guys listening. This was episode three of season two of Foodies Watching Movies. I think we're going to call it Chopped Club. Eh, Chopped, Chopped Club. <laughs> right? I like it. Did there. Yeah, right, 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 okay. I just thought of that right now, that just kind of popped in there. Uh, but... If that is, are you selfieing on the goddamn podcast? Yeah, I wanted to take a picture of you. Oh, why did you just take you? it? Oh, you I took did. it. I oh, took great. Pictures. Cool. That one I was Instagram. blissfully Memories. unaware. All right, folks. Well, <clears throat> if that is going to do it for this week's episode of Foodies Watching Movies, thank you guys again so much for joining us. I'm Nate. I'm Veronica. I'm Lauren. I'm still very hungover. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Andrew. <laughs> We're all still hungry. <laughs> and uh, keep eating, folks. Later. <laughs>